What's up everyone? Welcome to Target Focus Life. Today we got a shotgun showdown. Two shotguns going head to head. The Beretta 686 Silver Pigeon vs. the Browning Satori Hunter. Only one can win. If you want to see which one rises to the top, let's go. Here we go. This is always exciting for me. I love shotgun showdowns because I've reviewed both of these shotguns. Actually, we'll put a link down in the description if you want to watch the full review on either of these shotguns. We have that. So with the 686, Breda says this is the best price to quality value on the market for an over-under shotgun. We're definitely going to see if that is true. Browning says something a little bit different. They say, have you looked at an over-under shotgun and thought it's too pretty to take to the field? Well, they've solved it, which of course makes it sound like what, you made an ugly gun that no one cares what happens to it? I think what they really mean is this is a working grade gun. This is a gun that's meant to be in the field. You're gonna run it through the paces and I guess that's not a big deal if it gets beat up because it's not so pretty. I don't know what Browning means by it. Kind of some weird marketing material, but that's what Browning says. That's what Beretta says. We're gonna put these guns head to head. Looking at the specs of these shotguns, they're both 20 gauges. They're both obviously over-unders and they're right around the same price point. The Satori Hunter comes in at MSRP of $22.69, while the Beretta Silver Pigeon is just a little bit more at $23.50, $2,350, but I was able to get both of these guns from Reed's, my favorite sporting good retailer, for less than that. So they're in the same ballpark as far as price. They're both field guns. Intended use is upland hunting. You could shoot some clays with these as well. They're not really sporting guns, they're field guns. So upland, wing shooting, that type of thing. When it comes to weight of these shotguns, if I just pick them up, I can definitely tell the Satori Hunter is a heavier gun. It weighs in at six pounds, eight ounces. The Silver Pigeon is a little bit lighter, six pounds, three ounces. I would say the difference feels even bigger in the hands. I'm not sure why that is. The Beretta just feels great as far as weight. The Browning a little bit heavier. Not that that's a heavy gun to be carrying around the field, six pounds, eight ounces. It's not terrible. But when you pick up this gun, you can definitely tell it's lighter, feels more nimble in the hands, something you're definitely not gonna mind carrying around all day. When it comes to trigger pull, both these guns have really nice feeling triggers. If I just pull up this 686, nice crisp trigger. We do the same with the Satori Hunter. Ooh, which one do I like better? Just feeling them, just feeling them here. Auto safety, auto safety on the Beretta though which is not uncommon on field guns, but I can't say I love it. They're close. Let's put a scale on these, see where they come in as far as weight. First, let's pull on the silver pigeon here, see what we come up with. Auto safety. That gets me so many times. I gotta admit right off the bat, I'm not a huge fan of these auto safeties, which means every time you open up the gun and eject the shells, it goes back unsafe. All right, let's give it a pull. Four pounds, five ounces. We're close, six, seven, eight ounces. Oh, four pounds, 10.6 ounces. That's a nice light trigger. Four pounds, 10.6. Let's give a pull on the Satori Hunter now. See what we come in at. Four pounds, five ounces, four pounds. Four pounds, 5.9 ounces. So, I mean, they're both sub five pound triggers. The Satori Hunter is a little bit lighter on the trigger. I'm gonna prefer that, honestly. Both feel really good. They're both really nice triggers, really happy with them. As far as other specs, out of the box, the Satori Hunter is 14 and a quarter inches length of pull, which is pretty standard. The Beretta 686 Silver Pigeon is 14 and three quarter inches length of pull which is maybe gonna be a little bit big for some shooters. It fits me pretty decently right out of the box. I like how it mounts up, but that definitely could be long for some shooters. Looking at the drop at comb, that's the distance from the top of the receiver to the comb, that drop right there, inch and five eighths on this gun. The Beretta has an inch and three eighths. So it has less drop at comb. How do they accomplish that? They have a slimmer receiver. Because the receiver is slimmer, it allows you to be on more of the sight plane with your hands, which is kind of a cool thing. It should help you point a little more naturally. Your hands are closer to where your head and eye are. If you look side by side here, it might be hard to tell, but this one's a little boxier, 
a little bigger. This has got a nice slim receiver. Now with that said, this has a flat rib on the 686, which is all right. A lot of field guns have flat ribs. This has a raised rib and I like raised ribs. Reason being, I feel like when I get into flat ribs, I'm looking right through the top lever. My eye is just catching that top lever. It's distracting where if I have a raised rib, like on the Satori Hunter, I'm looking over that top lever straight down the rib. When I pick up the 686, like I catch myself peeking, pulling my head up just because of that visual distraction of the top lever. And in order to be looking flat down the rib, I almost have to bury that front bead. And that is a little bit challenging for me to get used to. I've hunted with both of these guns. I've taken these guns out pheasant hunting. So I've got to shoot them in the field, which isn't always the case when I do a shotgun review. So I feel like I have some good experience with these guns. And that's all gonna play into who I pick as a winner at the end. Now, both of these guns have a 7 8 inch drop going from the comb to the heel. When we look at chokes of these shotguns, the Satori Hunter comes with three chokes. This is running the Vector Plus choke system, so it has the standard improved cylinder, modified, and full choke. And by the way, these are not the stock chokes. I've already switched them out for my Carlson's chokes, as I generally like to do. The 686 comes with five chokes, flush mount chokes, as are the Satori. They're flush mount chokes, but the 686 has five of them. So we're going from cylinder to improved cylinder, mod, improved mod, and full. However, I don't have my Carlson's chokes for that shotgun, so I'm just shooting the standard flush mount chokes. I'll try not to let that uh, sway any opinion that I have that I might be shooting a little bit better patterns out of this shotgun. Looking at the barrels on these shotguns, as I mentioned, this is a 26 inch, but the Satori Hunter is also available in a 28 inch. The 686 has a 28 inch on it, as you see here, but it's also available in a 30 inch. So lastly, the Satori Hunter has an Inflex recoil pad. 686 has a recoil pad. I don't know if there's a fancy name for it, but it has interchangeable recoil pads. You can actually adjust the length of pull. But like I said, out of the box, this comes in at 14 and three quarters, so it's already a little bit longer. You may want it a little bit longer, but I don't know. I mean, you're starting to get pretty long at that point anyway. So when it comes to specs of these shotguns, this is really tough. This is really tough. They both had real nice triggers. This one was a little bit lighter. I would give the edge there, but as far as weight, I really like how light this shotgun is. I would give the edge there. Ah, uh, this has some adjustability with length of pull, but it's already long out of the box. You could always throw a Falcon Strike on probably either one of these guns. Recoil reduction system, which is what I like to use. If you want to see the length of that, that's in the description. <sighs> Specs, I don't know. This is a toss up. We're going with a toss up on specs. I can't choose a clear winner here. So we're gonna move right along into ergonomics. This is the look, the feel, the balance, the function. Looking at the Beretta 686, first it's smooth. Right off the bat, this action is nice. And the 686 is probably one of the number one selling actions, at least for Beretta anyways, on the market. Feels great in the hands. We got a slender grip here on the stock. The forend is tapered as we move to, towards the schnabel front end of the forearm, which I really like. It looks really nice. And this gun feels great in the hand. It has some nice checkering, but it's not very aggressive. The checkering's actually kind of rounded or smooth, right? Which you may like, you may not like, but it's not super aggressive. Feels good in the hands. Balance, well, balance is about, about there. Right now, if I just pick this up and feel it, so we get a side-by-side -side comparison, it feels a little chunkier in the hands. The grip is slightly bigger. The fore end though is just like a two by four. It's boxy. It doesn't taper towards the front end. I like a little taper or contour to the fore end. So I don't like that as much on this gun. The texture is aggressive. It's real nice looking texturing, but it's aggressive. And I know from shooting this gun that it tears your hands up a little bit. That might be great in the field if you feel like you need a little extra grip. These 20 gauges don't kick much, so I don't think you need all that much extra grip. Balance on this, pretty well balanced. But I, I gotta say, when I feel this gun, it feels front heavy. When I grab this gun, it doesn't. It feels completely different in the hands. As far as working controls, top lever, action, everything's smooth, really nice on this gun. The safety, however, is an automatic safety. So if I'm out in the field, 
boom, boom. We're still in the birds and back in. I gotta put it back on fire, which is not a big deal. I'm not saying it is, but here's where I find it to be a big deal. I often don't take my safety off until I see a bird flush, which means I'm seeing the bird flush and now I need to take the safety off as I mount. That should be pretty easy. The way that this safety is designed, it's really easy for your thumb to slip up and off of it. So as I go up, see I couldn't even tell if it was on safe or fire there because it's so hard to push. As I go up, I'm coming up like this. I mean, I'm having to work. I'm not exaggerating this. I have to push that and really dig my thumb in to get that on safe or on fire rather. However, on the browning, top lever, action. Now this action doesn't feel quite as smooth as that. Maybe I've shot that a few more times. It's loosened up just a little bit, but everything's tight. Everything's nice as far as controls, but the safety on this one, very simple. Doesn't look fancy at all. That looks a little fancier, but this operates so easy. I can quickly select under barrel, over barrel, safe, fire, very easy. Now I can do it on the mount. So that bird gets up, fire, fire, and I'm right there. Both of these shotguns have just a single bead on top which is pretty common in a field gun. No fibers, which is great because I don't really care for fiber guns, especially on field guns. If I have to choose one, my goodness, this is so hard, guys. I really never know what I'm gonna say or choose about these guns until I start doing it side by side. I'm processing as I'm holding these guns. And I would say for most things on ergonomics, feel, balance, function, I prefer the Silver Pigeon. But that safety issue, I mean, hands down, prefer the Satori Hunter. You gotta be able to operate your safety smoothly, easily. For that reason alone, I'm gonna choose the Satori Hunter because you can have a gun that feels great in the hands, but if you're struggling to get that safety off as a bird's flushing, that will cause you to miss shots. And I've experienced that with this multiple times. Miss shots because I struggled with the safety. And I would love to hear from other 686 owners on the Silver Pigeon. Does anyone else have issues with that? Is it just me? Do I got a gun that's just a little bit tight on the safety? Would love to hear your feedback on that. Also, anyone that has the Satori, I would love to hear just general overall feedback of people that own these guns. So, although I love so many things about the 686, I'm choosing the Browning Satori for the ergonomics. Now we're taking a look at the quality of the build. I'm not gonna go too in depth on this. I think both of these are well-built guns. They're gonna stand up to the test of time the use and abuse of being in the field, a lot of different shots. Also looking at the finish of the guns, the Browning has a little bit nicer wood. I think this is grade two slash three. Beretta doesn't publish what grade wood there is, but when I just hold these guns up side by side, I think we got nicer looking wood here on the Browning. But then we move up from the wood. Follow me on up, get your eyes up, and look at these receivers. There's an obvious winner here, right? Like, I, I don't think I need to explain this. We have a nickel coated steel receiver here on the Satori. And we have a engraved, very beautifully engraved on the top, the bottom, the trigger guard, all the way around, up on the top lever. The Satori is just kind of plain, basic. This has some character to it. If I'm just visually looking at the guns, I'm easily picking this one up. I think the finish is really nice on this gun, although this has a little bit nicer wood. But as far as overall quality, I, you know, it's hard to say. I would have to put a lot of rounds for these guns to see if we had any issues. They're both gonna hold up for a long time. They're both on well-built receivers. I don't think you're gonna have much for issues. Again, I'm gonna rely on you, the viewers that have these guns, to tell me if you've had any issues. I love when I get to hear feedback from the field. One cool thing about the Beretta is that a lot of the parts are replaceable. So if you ever do have issues, the lugs start to wear out, anything like that, the ejectors, it's fairly easy to replace. So for that reason, quality of build, I'm gonna give an edge to the Beretta 686. All right, time to put the ears on. It's time to do some shooting, which is by far my favorite thing to do. We're gonna look at recoil and reliability. So when it comes to reliability, there's not really a lot we're gonna be looking at on these shotguns. As long as they're ejecting, it's reliable, right? But I wanna see what these guns feel like in the hands, get some shots down range. I will shoot them side by side, get them both loaded up. I like to do it really quick so it's nice and fresh comparison. 
I'm just gonna fire off a couple shots here, see what the recoil feels like. We'll start with the Satori. Remember, this is just a little bit heavier. See if it handles recoil any better with that added weight. Comes nicely back into the shoulder. Feels pretty good. Both manage the recoil really well. I'm gonna do that one more time. Okay, I actually felt like the browning kicked a little bit more, which is strange when you've got two very similar guns. This one's a little heavier, the browning is. You would expect it to maybe have a little bit more recoil. Now, both these guns you have auto ejectors, of course. They eject completely fine. But when it comes to recoil, I'm gonna have to give the edge to the Silver Pigeon. For how light this gun is, the recoil is actually very manageable. Shooting them side by side, I wouldn't have ever been able to tell you doing reviews on two separate days, but when I shoot them side by side, this gun definitely felt better for me. Now, I understand that different shooters might have a little bit different experience of perceived or felt recoil, so take it for what it's worth, but this gun feels really nice. Let's go ahead and break these guns down. Over-unders, very simple, four end off. Guns apart, there's our barrel. I'm gonna show you side by side the receivers here, the difference between the two. It comes off a little more challenging than the Silver Pigeon did. So here we go, we got the two different receivers. So you can see the Silver Pigeon hinges right here where the Satori hinges right there. So just a little bit difference in design. The locking lug on the Satori is down here at the bottom. That's what locks the receiver into place, which is a little bit different than what we see on the Beretta, which actually has these lugs that come out that lock going into the barrel right there. Versus on the Satori, it locks in that groove right there. Just a little bit difference in how they operate, but with the guns broke apart, I mean, you can see here, if we look at these side by side, look at the difference in size of our receivers quite a bit more material and weight. And it's gonna be hard to see on video, but there's a lot more to this Hunter weight-wise. The fore-end, I mean, quite a bit more weight there. If weight's a big consideration for you, you know which one you're going with. Enough on that, let's put these guns back together. Or as I like to say, enough talking. Let's do some shooting. So let's get these guns on the clock. Why do I do speed shooting? If you watch my videos, you know because these guns aren't meant for speed. It's not about how fast they can cycle, right? Granted, the triggers have to be able to shoot and reset, but what I'm really trying to figure out is when I'm on the clock, when I'm rushing, because anyone can mount up like this, right? But that's not realistic. When we're hunting, it's, there's a bird. You know, we're mounting quick, we're getting on it, and we're shooting. So when I'm doing the speed shooting, what I'm trying to figure out is if I'm under pressure, if things are moving fast, how quick can I get mounted up on that bird? Boom, boom and make two quick shots. Now, I'm gonna hand throw the clays. It's not the most realistic hunting scenario, but it does give me a good idea of how this gun totally comes together with recoil, with the sight picture, with managing the weight, the swing, the trigger, all these things coming together. And then I'm gonna declare one of these guns the winner of this shotgun showdown. So let's get on the clock. Here we go. First up with the Silver Pigeon. Not bad, not bad at all. That felt really good. A 119, right off the bat. Looks like it took me 0.99 to get on the first clay and then 0.2 to shoot the second clay. Not bad at all. That was my first attempt on this shotgun. So we're gonna leave it at that, pick up the Satori Hunter. Now in theory, it should be easier on this gun because I have my Carlson choke tubes. Let's see if that is the case. Ooh, that was fast. 114. Also, my first shot with this shotgun, 114. Okay, so when it comes to speed shooting, both these guns were really easy to shoot. Got on those targets pretty darn fast. Let's try some trap shooting here, just to give us a little bit different, a little more realistic presentation, like we're shooting at a pheasant that's flushing. Pull. Pull. Satori shoots nice, easy to, easy to get up there tracking with those birds. All right, let's make it like I'm not so prepared now. Maybe this bird surprised me, right? I'm just walking. Pull. 
took his head off. <laughs> nice shot. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Pull. Ooh. Miss on that one. Let's try the silver pigeon, see what the difference is. Pull. Pull. Ooh. Didn't track quite as well with that gun. On that shot, anyways. Pull. Got it. Pull. Hits real nice. It's gonna be tough. I don't know how I'm choosing winner out of these two. Pull. Man, oh man, which gun would I pick? These are so tough. And I know whatever gun I pick, I'm gonna have people that disagree with me. When it comes to ergonomics and just the feel, of the gun. I love the Silver Pigeon. It feels great in the hands. It's light. When it comes to the safety though, I love this gun. Much better safety, much easier to use. I would take this just for the safety. Now, when it comes to looks, obviously this is a much prettier gun. Like this is something your friends are going to look at and be like, oh that's a nice gun, man. This one they're going to look at and they're like, oh okay, you're going to shoot some birds. Cool. All right. When it comes to quality of build, I think it's you could go either way on this. Recoil, I thought this actually handled the recoil better. So really we got just a major toss up. I'll tell you what, if I could take this safety and put it on this gun, I'm going with this one. Absolutely, hands down. Feels better, lower recoil, it's prettier, but practically speaking, you gotta be able to use your safety and use it well. That's what makes this so hard. But I think I'll find a way to overcome the safety because I just wanna shoot this gun. I'll be honest with you, I wanna shoot this gun, so I am choosing the Beretta 686 Silver Pigeon for the Shotgun Showdown. If you disagree, or if you agree, put it down in the comments. I'd love to hear what you have to say. What other over-under shotguns would you like to see me put head-to-head -head in a Shotgun Showdown? Put that in the comments as well. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, whether you're in the field or in life, it's only those shots that you're laser-focused on that you're gonna hit. So live, target focus. See ya.